folks stuck glaciers with our notes recently. And here's an introduction to the Glacier Lab, Glacier Rebound Lab. You guys remember the movie Ice Age with Sid Sloth and Diego and Manny the Moody Mammoth? Well, at the time of the Ice Age, that X represents where New York State is. So we were completely, this area was completely covered with a mile thick of ice. Even thicker if we head north into what is now Canada. The ice was up to two miles thick in those areas. And that put a lot of stress on the land. It actually pushes the land down. In the same way that these cargo containers, when they're shipped across oceans on these massive ocean liners, these cargo ships, it actually weighs down on the ship and pushes it down lower. We can see on the side of a ship that as the cargo is being removed, as the cargo is being taken off, that the ship will actually rise up. And we can see that on the markings on the side. Here are two ships that are the same. But you'll notice the 193 is sinking lower. It has more cargo. Cargo was unloaded from 132, hence therefore that ship is riding higher. It's the same thing that happens on the land. After these areas, these locations who had uh, thousands of meters of ice on them, once that ice melts, the land is now rebounding back to where it originally started from. We call this glacial rebound so here we can see a diagram where when the glacier is on there the crust subsides or gets pushed to push down once the glaciers melt away the crust is starting to rebound so in this lab on glacial rebound we're going to look at areas such as this where it appears as if all those lineations are where there were old beaches and we would think that the sea level had been dropping what's actually happening is the land was lifting up here's another one where you can see where the uh, the former beach was here. The shoreline was along this area right here. The land has been uplifted because of glacial rebound to take on its present spot. If we take a look at the lab on glacial rebound, read your introduction. talks about that whole idea of a, a ship being uh, having its cargo taken off. Here's a map of eastern Canada, and the ISO lines on this map show the number of meters that that land has been uplifted. So what you're seeing is a map that shows the meters that the land has been uplifted. So you're going to use that map to fill out the Google sheet that came with the lab. It already gives you how long that area has been rebounding for. You're going to fill in the amount of rebound. For instance, if we take a look at uh, this city, this town right here called Churchill, Notice the dot for Churchill, that's where that town is, is in between the 70 meter line and the 80 meter line. It's not touching 70 or 80. So the value for Churchill, the amount of rebound for Churchill is somewhere between 70 and 80. And since that dot is closer to the 80, our guess would probably be better if Churchill was like around 77 or 78 meters. Remember, as we're filling out our Google Sheet, we're not going to put our units. Our units are already here at the titles. This way, we can graph this. If there's no units on here, we'll be able to tell the computer to graph that data. Once you've filled that out, you're going to move on to step. And so there's a new feature that we haven't used yet. We've been making graphs all year long, but there's a new one, and that's adding what's called a trend line. So here's a graph that I've plotted the data as a scatter plot. You can see zero uh, starts the horizontal axis. So I've included zero as the horizontal. But I want to line some data that I could use down here in the last 2,000 years. So to edit the chart under customize, I want the series to have a trend line. And that trend line right now you can see is it doesn't really hit those dots very well. But if you change the type of trend line to exponential, it'll better mark and hit those dots. So that's our best fit line or our trend line. That's something new to our lab. So don't forget to do that under step six. Once you have your graph, we can then move on and answer some of these questions. If you have any uh, thoughts on the questions, then please ask in class.